good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. If this Twitch stream has started, that is good. Otherwise, we're going to give it a few minutes before we jump into it. Let people roll right in. How about that? So, we're going to give it a few minutes. Now, if you've been following the stream, you will know that we are not the best at streaming, which is why we brought the best to help us <laughs> with the stream. So, so this is great. This is great. I'm right now calling this course two, how to stream on Twitch. Welcome to the show. We are squiggly. We are learn to earn trying to teach you everything about building and selling stuff for the new 3D internet we like to call the metaverse. Now, as we know, it's not enough just to learn how to build. You got to learn how to market. So I'm joined here by Bobby Totino and Half Dork. What is up, guys? How's it going? Welcome in. Hi. Hey, everybody. Nice to be here. Well, oh. Bobby Totino, do you want to give an introduction to what we're looking at? And Half Dork just brought an amazing animal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it to you two to kick it off. So we're looking at behind the scenes uh, Twitch. I think this is the creator dashboard. And Half Dork's yeah. going to show us around. He's going to show us. Uh, we're going to level up today here on the Squiggly Stream thanks to Half Dork. So take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Half Dork. Uh, Thank you, Ed and Bobby, for having me on the Squigglyverse once again. So a lot of you are going to have questions about streaming and where to start. And so I wanted to help kind of introduce you to the Twitch creator dashboard. So what you're looking at right now is actually a new software that Twitch had come out with recently. So let's uh, just go from kind of ground zero of Twitch. So I've so if you wanted to start streaming, just you know, just start just today is the day. You'll go to your creator dashboard, which is up here at the top right, you'll see kind of like this profile picture. And so now that you're in your creator dashboard, you had clicked your profile picture, clicked creator dashboard, you'll see this great landing page. And so Twitch has been around 10 plus years now, and so they've really come up with great ways to kind of introduce someone to streaming. What they've come out with is this thing called Twitch Studio. So this is actually where I would recommend most people start. So if you wanted to start streaming today, I was literally able to get this up and running in 10 minutes. You'd click download and it would, you know, save that file, install it. So that was what was on screen is this right here, Twitch Studio Beta. So now that I have this open, I'd love to hear questions about, you know, various things that you need, such as like a microphone, a webcam. And what's great is you really do not need either of those things. All you need is a computer that is able to run, well, whatever you're streaming. So the game or Vox Edit or Game Maker. And then you're pretty much good to go. I, excuse me, you do need an internet connection. <laughs> I don't know if that was apparent or not. But uh, one thing that a lot of streaming tutorials will recommend and i highly suggest if you start on this path that you look up some streaming tutorials is that you need to check your speed and like how fast your internet is able to go so for example if you're able to stream 10 megabits upload per second so let's uh let's actually run a speed test real quick if you just google speed test it's the first thing that pops up so with my internet i have great download but the upload is what you want to be looking at. So upload is essentially how fast your computer is able to transfer data to the internet. So getting a good idea is kind of important simply because you'll be able to discern later down the road, like, oh, why wasn't my stream kind of like going fluidly? Why, why was there lag? And so internet is often the first like big hurdle that you have to jump over in order to have a successful stream. 
start, you know, watching blurry pixels on the screen. So with 15, this is more than you need. They say uh, for a proper stream, about eight megabits per second upload is what you're looking for. So 15, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm green. I'm good to go. So now we'll come back to the Twitch studio and we can see all of these various settings. So again, my name's Half Dork. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, any questions to start us off? I know I've, I've already been talking for a minute or two. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And I think maybe even before getting into, you know, how to Twitch stream, it might be helpful for everyone just to share, you know, your experience with Twitch streaming, you know, our experience with Twitch streaming. And um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it is kind of where we want to start. Um, so first off, shout out chat. This is something that we learned how to do, which is like the most meta thing is that like streaming is not making a YouTube video. So we're live, we have to interact. So Bruktholomew, Sparky Snickel, Sage D, Batman TV, Cold Cuts and Cheese, What Is Up, Nikisa, Vija Stream, Erica Gloom, and R. Coronado, and Nervex. What a squad we're here with. Um, streaming can be pretty challenging. Um, and that's mainly because you have all these different audio inputs and video inputs. Um, and so, so Half Dork, we'd love to hear, you know, what is your experience with Twitch streaming? You look like a pro, um, you know a lot of stuff. Have you been doing it your whole life? Like, what's, what's, what's your kind of journey with Twitch streaming? Five to six years now, just kind of like doing it with and for other people. I worked for two different YouTube studios. And so I used OBS a lot. OBS, you might have heard of in the Twitch space, stands for Open Broadcast Software. And it is an open source software that people can kind of download and start recording their games, or they can start live streaming their games. That's what it was created for. And so it's it's kind of been built up over the years, and a lot of streamers use it because of how customizable it is. So we'll be looking at that later today, uh, and it's something I use, and I'll get to show you a little bit of behind the scenes of how my stream operates. But to answer your question, I have uh, several years of using these types of softwares, and so I'd love to kind of share you know, my process and how I'm able to kind of like make the things happen that I do. But I also want to kind of introduce you to the these things because a lot of you might be beginners and maybe some of you are a little bit inexperienced when it comes to uh streaming and you know it might look a little bit difficult but i promise you with the tools that you're disposable your disposal not your disposable but as that as soon as you start it's going to seem effortless it's it's basically the first hurdle you get over and then you're just playing the games you're just you know entertaining you're being yourself and i think Streaming in general is a great way to find your voice. And I'll say this often, but your voice is just you expressing yourself, you being yourself, you being entertaining, and just having a presence online is very important when you're trying to be a creator. So that being said, let's just poke through this software a bit. So this was Twitch Studio Beta. Again, if you would like to install this and follow along, you'll want to go to your creator dashboard so everyone here in twitch with us to get there you would click on your the icon in the top right corner of your screen and they'll when you click it there should be a, a section so I'll, I'll walk through it again there'll be a section that says creator dashboard so now that you've clicked creator dashboard this is uh the new software that they're promoting twitch studio so that's what we're poking through right now and then when we're ready, we can come back and we can look at all these various things, but these are what it is implemented into your Twitch stream, such as, you know, like emotes, drops, uh, et cetera. So we'll come back to all this. But with this software, this is everything you need to get started. So when you first boot it up, I didn't even edit any of this. So we're going to be editing it together. You'll see you have three scenes. So the scenes act as kind of these landing pages for different parts of the stream itself. So let's say you're playing a game, but then you had to take a bathroom break. You could click this and it would swap. It basically cut 
to the scene in question. So be right back screen. So this is your, you know, pause. I have to go do something real quick. Come right back. And then you also have like a chatting screen. So unfortunately, because my camera is being shared with Squiggly right now, you won't be able to see my webcam. However, luckily, I was able to put this kind of like placeholder. Uh, so with this just chatting screen, maybe you want your camera to be the full picture. You can click inside of these windows and you can adjust each of these to kind of fit your specific style and what you would like to see. Because you want to, while you're streaming, put yourself in the place of, your view, of a viewer, of an audience member. So it's like, what would I like to look at <laughs> outside of your beautiful face, of course? Well, you can click on this right side of the screen and you can change. Let's say you had a different camera. Maybe you have a webcam and perhaps, you know, you wanted to use a different webcam and you have two plugged in at the same time. You can change it using this device section. Or if you don't have a webcam, you can obviously kind of remove this. You can deactivate them or you can kind of like minimize it, put it off screen. You don't need a webcam to stream. And I think that is something that a lot of people believe is necessary, but it really isn't. It's not essential to stream. Yep. Streaming is, 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 as Squigglyverse will tell you, is a great way to get feedback and it's a great way to share your work. And as on that point, like the camera you're looking at for me is my laptop camera. And honestly, guys, don't, don't get fooled because most webcams that you buy that are like cheap are worse quality most likely than your laptop camera if you have a laptop camera. Now if you're if you're on a desktop PC, it's a little bit different, but our setup is, you know, we have a laptop and a monitor. An external monitor helps a lot with being able to put different windows and look at Twitch chat while streaming, but um, if you have a laptop, you can do it with a laptop. But if you have, you know, an HDMI cable and a spare monitor with a laptop, that is literally all you need to get streaming. Uh, we have this mic, but I feel like it's not the best. So maybe we're going to fix that too. But but it's it's really true. You don't need heavy equipment to stream at all. Um, but what about lighting, Half Dark? You look pretty well lit. What's going on in, <laughs> in your room? So lighting is kind of the next step to, you know, leveling up your stream. and having proper lighting goes a long way. I personally would say if you're just now getting started, not to worry about it too much. But if you have like $20 to spare, you could buy a light that is for like smartphones. So you might have seen these before. I'm trying to put it up in screen, on screen. But I'm hanging this kind of like $10, $20 mic like light that has a phone kind of like mount attached to it. And it's kind of like right in my face, but it's not jarring. It's not like distracting me because it's such a soft light. And then I also have a light behind my camera on the right side of my screen. So <laughs> my camera settings right now are attuned to a DSLR. So a DSLR, if you're unfamiliar, is for like more professional photography. And I was a videographer for a while. Like I was recording and editing videos for my clients. And so this camera I had, you know, in storage pretty much. And I was like, you know what, if I'm going to start streaming, I'm going to use it. And so with an HDMI cable, I was able to attach that and hook it up to my stream. Again, these are advanced things that I'm just kind of like telling you. Of yeah. Just to just, <laughs> uh, what we're looking at right now is kind of like a gameplay. So I'm going to mute it, Ooh. but we're going to hop back into Twitch studio and you'll be able to see kind of like the stream setup we have going on. Cool, cool. And uh, the other thing, back on lighting real quick, is sure. face a window if it's during the daytime, but if it's during the night, I found this YouTuber who literally these are grown, like they, you can use these to like plant tomatoes or whatever, but they're called clamp lights. You can get two of them for like 15 hmm. bucks on Amazon and just put them on a desk or on a computer, but super cheap, good way to get kind of standard lighting. Nice. Yeah, highly recommend just using whatever's at your disposal too. Like if you have a lamp on your desk, perhaps like take the shade off of it while you're streaming and maybe it'll like illuminate your face and then play with it a bit. Maybe make sure, you know, your face is at least visible 
when you're using webcam. Lighting itself, I think a lot of people will be able to kind of skip when you're starting out. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, but just keep it in mind because a lot of professionals do use lighting. Proper lighting really does make you kind of stand out. Uh, like my camera right now, it it looks professional simply because I have lighting. And so just keep it in mind. It's it's part of the entire process of streaming. And I'm too loud, uh, Little Legion says, so I will turn my mic down a bit if I can. And um, if you don't want to worry about lighting, if you don't want don't want to worry about webcams, you could definitely go uh, the Bobby Totino route. Oh yeah, <laughs> what route is that? The uh, <laughs> avatar on screen? Yes, sir. Or or like the, the, the game dizzy. People are mentioning uh, they love the game dizzy bear. That's definitely an option. Yes, hundred uh, percent. V tubing is kind of like this new niche when it comes to streaming and people love it it's you're watching like a cartoon character so i've used it before in the past and maybe we can do an advanced squiggly course setting up a vtuber but it is a very it's like a skill set you have to learn to kind of get it up and running but it is fun and i know a lot of you might be interested in that so i'm gonna keep poking around in our twitch studio software <laughs> we haven't really gotten that far inside of it, but I'm going to start clicking inside of this gameplay scene. So in the Twitch studio, you can start clicking about uh, like a border. Border. Let's say you want a border. You can turn it off and on using this kind of toggle switch on the right side. So I'm in the gameplay scene on this right side of the screen. You can click each of these objects. And as you click them, let's say this is this is my camera as an example. You can scroll down and you can start adding you know like extra things let's say you wanted a border on your camera but not on the gameplay well i like green so i'm going to add a green border and i'll probably minimize it a bit Ooh, i like the rounding of it oh let's see if i i like this maybe yeah we'll go full round this time around <laughs> and then we can click back in our gameplay and oh i don't like that border it doesn't match this new camera i have so i can turn it off using some of these features i could even add like a color filter if i really wanted to um maybe for my camera settings i wanted to turn on a green screen so if you have a green background behind you it's called color keying you can pretty much remove any one color from your camera settings and so the green screen as you know will be like a very bright vibrant green purple is another good choice for a green screen uh for to color key that out will allow you to put things behind you or perhaps overlay your own webcam on top of things so that it's easier to kind of share a space so for example this webcam maybe you don't like having that big kind of like circle or that big round or that big square you can use a green screen to kind of like customize the appearance of your stream. So with our gameplay, everything looks great. You know what? I'm happy with that. So another thing you'll notice on screen is that I have a chat box. So with Twitch Studio, I'm very excited to share because it has all of these things pre-set up. There's nothing really left to, for me to do other than click, you know, save and start, which we're going to get to. But I want to tell you about, you know, more of the, the scene features that you can customize. So with on this left side of the screen, we're still in our gameplay scene, but now you'll see there's a layers section. So the first layer that pops up is chat. And you can move these layers around. Let's just say you want a chat to kind of like come out from behind your webcam. So now that we have it kind of open and on the right side of the screen, we have chat selected. We can test this message here. And because we moved it underneath our webcam, you can see it's now kind of like showing up you know, behind it. And so we'll, we'll customize it, maybe like place it. And I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to move it around. And we can have it, you know, test a couple messages. Maybe I wanted it to be a little bit taller. What I did was grab this and then I can also hold like alt and kind of customize it even, even further. But generally it's very responsive. Like this software, I highly recommend you check out. 
Uh, but we'll add a couple more test messages. Maybe we'll put it like in the corner. And I won't spend too long with this. This is all personal preference. But we can also add like a border. So there's all sorts of tools. It looks like the, the best way is to just dive straight in and get your hands dirty. Is that right? Yeah, 100%. And uh, real quick, we have a question from Brock Tholomew. Uh, oh, does Brock. Twitch have a blurred background feature? Does Twitch have a blurred background feature? Uh, so the first thing that I'll point out is that there's an opacity feature. So you could technically just kind of like have some sort of blur in the form of an opacity. An opacity, for those unfamiliar, is just kind of like the transparency of an object. But that's a great question. Let's poke around, see if we can find one. Uh, you can add a filter, so you can fade it a little bit. But you can turn it on, off and on, without any problem. You can adjust the brightness and contrast. But specifically, like a blur, which I think I know what you Blur want. for, like, webcams, like the background oh, of a webcam. For, web for the I, I believe so. That's kind of like how... Have you seen that on Zoom? Where yes. Zoom kind of... Okay. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, um... um I think we're saying now that your mic is a bit quieter, a bit too oh, quiet. Too quiet now. <laughs> Got to find that sweet spot, you know, that Goldilocks zone. All right. Hopefully that's better. I did a 10% boost there. Appreciate you. <laughs> Maxi, no, we can't start over. No, and uh, cool. I think the mic should be in a good spot now. But yeah, and, uh, I think one thing you could possibly do is if you want to use so Google Meets has probably by far the best background blurring. So you could probably open Google Meets on another tab and rather than having your direct media input be your camera directly, you could just like screen clip your own face with the blurred background using Google Meets. It's not direct, but it definitely does the job. And if you have guests like Half Dork, we're using uh, Discord right now to share you know, each other's cameras and screens but you could also choose to do Google Meets and then use their blur feature. Yeah, that's actually a great suggestion and a cool workaround too. Uh, blurring a background is kind of like an advanced thing that you can obviously find tutorials for it online, but uh, the way Ed suggested is definitely a solution. So if that's something you want to do, uh, blurring your background, try that, see if that works for you. And uh, for those of you just now joining us, we're trying out Twitch Studios. I've actually never streamed with this software, so I'm setting it up for the first time. Uh, we'll look at other solutions for streaming, such as OBS Studios and Streamlabs OBS. But today, if you'd like to join us, you can click the icon in the top. And when you click your Twitch icon, top right of the screen, there'll be a drop down to click Creator Dashboard. In the Creator Dashboard, the first thing you'll see is a button uh, right here download Twitch Studio. So it's incredibly easy to use and it's intuitive. So if you're a beginning streamer or you want to begin streaming, I highly recommend this. So we're poking through it right now. Now that we have our chat set up, let's check out alerts. And we're just poking through it so you're all getting familiar. You can preview an alert. And then now that we have this preview, we can move it around. Maybe I want it on the, the bottom of the screen. We can even edit it. Let's say I wanted a new image. Let's, and they even give you several to pick. I like the fish. And we're going for a green color. So just clicking each of these, you're able to adjust and pick something that works for you. And alerts is something that is a little bit more advanced, but it's also something we'll touch on. And I'll even show you how mine work. Uh, having alerts is a great way to keep a stream interactive. It makes people want to follow you because they'll see, A, their name on screen, and they'll hear like a fun sound effect. And then they'll also hopefully hear you, the streamer, say, hey, thanks for following. And so the thing with streaming is it's a, a live, interactive medium. And so one thing you always want to keep in mind is that, you know, well, there's a camera rolling or there's the microphone's on. And so you want to be able to respond to things as they happen, whether that be the game you're playing or whatever you're talking about. And then you also want to be able to respond to chat. And so a lot of you might point out that some streamers don't chat with their stream, or maybe they're too engrossed in the game, or maybe so and so and so. And of course, you yourself are going to have your own kind of style. But as you're starting out, just kind of like 
figure it out as you go. Just play around with the, the various tools at your disposal. So now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and just start a sample stream. And so everything is kind of like default. I just loaded it up the first time. Let's try to start a stream. A stream. So the first thing you'll notice is that you'll click the bottom here, start stream. You can also record video, which is a great feature. Thank you, Twitch Studio. But at the bottom, you click start stream, and then you can customize, you know, where the stream's going, like what category, for example. So let's say we're doing a squiggly verse tutorial. And we're gonna put it in the sandbox. So you start typing in the sandbox and it'll come up. Ooh, did they, do you see this? I don't think you can see it, it's kind of small, but they're, I think they're updating it yeah, that's to where we can have, yeah. Cause right now we don't really have a thumbnail in the sandbox, but it looks like they're updating it and they're adding a new one. Well, maybe we'll try it. And then you can add tags. So tags uh, are not super prevalent and they're not too important, but I'll tell you what they do. If someone were to be searching on Twitch for let's say 3D art, or 3D modeling or 3D printing. Like they could type that into the search bar at the top of the Twitch you know, website. And then when they search that, your stream will be among those so long as it was tagged with that. And I think you can only have about five tags. So I think like game, game development's another great choice. Like let's say you're building a, a role-playing or adventure game. Maybe you're from the USA. America. And you speak in English. Or perhaps you speak a language that isn't very popular, you know, on the platform. And maybe someone who else who speaks your language is looking for, you know, creators in the same space. Like having your specific, you know, niche is very important to kind of like finding your community. So this is a game show. Cool. Everything's set up. We can customize our notification. Generally, you know, it, it says whatever the default is. Dorkbot went live. Beep boop. I'm live. And yeah, everything else looks pretty much good to go. We click go live. And right out of the box, it just, it works. And it kind of adjusts as you go. It looks as though I did not customize any of this at the top. But just to kind of walk you through everything you look at, uh, you can see how long you've been live, how many viewers are currently participating in your stream, how much of your CPU is being used. And so that's your uh, the little computer chip that kind of like runs everything. It's usually like an Intel processor or AMD. And so that's an important thing to keep in mind if you're streaming is you need the hardware to support. You'll want to know uh, your KBS, your kilobits per second. So how many bits on screen. So we're looking at, you know, an aspect ratio 1920 by 1080 P <laughs> by default. Thank you, Sparky for the follow. <laughs> uh, but in general, like this is a great number and you'll see it kind of dip into the yellow. And that's because things might be happening on screen. So when Sparky, for example, dropped that alert, like more bits were being displayed on screen. And so it, it kind of dipped for a second because more things were happening. So if I was in a game, let's just say Fortnite or some sort of 60 FPS type experience. So let's just hop into a random game. It, you're going to notice that these numbers begin to kind of fluctuate. And so you want to kind of adjust your stream in a way that makes sense and supports that. But with Twitch Studio, it seems to be doing everything automatically which is very nice, actually. So we can click on the settings. I did see uh, this number here. We can adjust our bit rate. So for a high action game, you're kind of, you're wanna, you want to go lower. But for a low action game, I would say the, the maximum that you really need is like 6,000. Anything more than that is kind of overkill. But let's say my internet is very bad. Very bad internet, lower bit rate is better because it's transferring less data. So let's just poke around. Uh, yeah, any questions? <laughs> uh, Brock asks, is it better to add as many tags as possible to get like more potential clicks or should we be focused on few tags? 
I think this is maximum. Uh, and tags can only help you. So I would add it up to the maximum, to be honest, because it's someone searching for a specific thing or a general thing, really, for tags. So when they're searching, your name kind of show up. It, it only improves the chance of you being discovered. Twitch itself is not great for discovery. It's, um, with a community like... I think with you streaming, it's like wrecking your broadcast to to the oh, is uh, it? Discord call. It uh, it, it was going in and out and getting robotic. Oh, I'm sorry. I I think that was actually Game Maker loading up. So, uh, now that we're like in the game, I think it should be better. But I'm not gonna hop around. I'm just gonna. Oh no, you're good. I was I was just letting you know it was kind of. Okay, thank you. Good to go. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, just to wrap up that thought with tags. Add every tag that seems relevant to you. And when you're customizing your tags, you can actually kind of like scroll through this list. And I, I recommend giving it a, a look through and kind of writing down whichever look great for you. Like campaign planning. I, I do use Dungeons & Dragons a lot. So let's say I was streaming, uh, you know, my pre-production of Dungeons & Dragons. Like I would use this tag specifically for that stream. But maybe if I was you doing like stuff in the game maker i would only use tags relevant to game maker such as game development or you know adventure mode <laughs> hey king what's up king so now that we have that going the stream's on in the background and let's say my internet just couldn't handle having so much going on on screen i adjusted it to the lowest setting i highly recommend you not only stream uh, for practice. So like the very first couple times you start streaming, maybe just like live record and play it and just kind of play it back too. In order to play it back, you'll want to record your video. So I'm curious where it's going to save that. So we'll have to find out, but I'm currently recording and you know, I'll, you know, run around, blah, 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 do, 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 do. And I'm right now I'm at the low, lowest setting. So it shouldn't have any tax on my machine. But let's say I wanted to see, you know, uh, this number go to like its maximum. So I can go back into my settings. And we'll go into stream settings, or I'm sorry, the recording settings. No, I'm sorry, the quality settings. <laughs> and then we'll click 6K. 6K is arguably the most you need. And everything kind of like updates in real time. So the nice thing with this software is like you didn't have to stop the stream. All right, this guy's hitting me with a tree. I like that animation. Okay, I died. And so now that we've wrapped up our stream, we've said goodbye to everybody. We'll end. We'll give them the feedback they want. And then we'll end the recording. And speaking of recordings, the uh, the post video or the post broadcast vods that's a that's an option within the twitch settings is that right because uh by default we we didn't turn those on for the first stream and uh had to go looking for it uh looking to record you mean yes so like twitch saving the vods the the post mm. so if you want twitch to record your videos there is a specific setting in the creator dashboard that you have to turn on i also believe it's attached to affiliates, but I think, you know, that's just to prevent bots from hosting oh, whatever. That makes sense. Okay. But uh, let me just poke around real quick. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll see. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if you can find it. But uh, the recording path is in my videos. So let me just pull it up on screen. I want to see how Twitch saved this because that's very useful. So what's great with this Twitch studio is you can start recording your gameplay right out of the box. Wow, here it is. And I'm going to pull it up on screen. And it's even recording my microphone. Ooh. I believe every broadcaster gets uh, 14 days of storage for videos. That's fantastic. Uh, I do recall you have to turn that setting on, though. So yes, yes. Me... There is a setting yeah. uh, within the stream settings. Uh, oh, like good. you said, you on the uh, from the creator dashboard, uh, the settings on the left, and then if you go to stream, 
uh, there's a little checkbox. Mm. Cool, I'm pulling it up so people can see it. Yeah, here it is. So if you're in your creator dashboard, you'll see it on the left side of the screen. There's a settings feature. You'll click stream. And then there's this VOD sections. So if you'd like to kind of have this library of your recent streams up to 14 days, 60 days for uh, partners and prime, that's later down the road, they will be automatically saved so people can click on your channel and just start watching content that you've already put out there into the Twitch space. So you'll, you'll definitely want to keep this enabled, but it is disabled by default. So that, that's why we're pointing it's a it's a it's a great tool and so just to review what i was recording here i had updated from 1500 kbs to 6000 and you'll see a clear difference here in quality like this is 1500 but let's say my internet couldn't handle you know all of the this frames per second going on me jumping around spinning the camera but if your 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 internet specifically can handle this amount of upload and this amount of bits being sent to Twitch and then broadcast, you know, wherever, I highly recommend, you know, using this tool to figure out, you know, how fluid it looks. So with my internet, it's, it's good enough to maintain that quality. But when you're watching, let's say that your internet can't maintain it, you'll notice it kind of like glitch in and out, and it will be very apparent that it's not able to sustain it so let's uh wrap up a few things with twitch studio specifically and uh if i'm long-winded i apologize happy to answer questions as they come up no you're doing great absolutely um and then i guess to mention um the vods are only stored for like 14 days for other broadcasters so you want somewhere for your your videos to kind of uh retire so it's a good mm -hmm. idea to have a youtube channel maybe on the side for you to upload uh, twitch actually has a feature um in the video editor where you can just export directly to youtube you don't have to download the file transfer it over it just exports directly to your channel um and so that's a good place uh, to put those vid those broadcasts, that way they don't disappear after 14 days. Yes, that is a fantastic suggestion. Uh, and YouTube itself is its own animal, and you'll get used to it the more you use it in terms of like uploading. But I would like to just kind of demonstrate that that is something I too am you know using as a way to kind of like search through my catalog. So if you were to go to my YouTube channel, which <laughs> I haven't quite pushed it yet. Uh, you'll be able to see, you know, I'm currently doing as Bobby said, and just having all of these past streams downloaded, uploaded to YouTube, and then I can finally delete them off my computer. And so just having this catalog can really serve you in the future. It acts as a portfolio in a way. And it's something you can kind of like look back on in the future. Perhaps you wanted to, you know, recapture a moment, or maybe you're making highlights in the future. And editing and video editing specifically, uh, your content is something we can maybe talk about on Squigglyverse one day. But it's, a, it's again, it's a skill that is part of creating content, especially video content and putting it on YouTube that a lot of people, you, you should incorporate. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Maxi, hey, Max is great. Like, Mac, Maxi has a fantastic YouTube por portfolio. Highly recommend Maxi's. I don't know if we're allowed to shout out <laughs> viewers in chat. Hey, no problem. It's all it's all love here. For sure. Thanks, guys. Uh, so with that being said, everything here in our kind of like Twitch studio, it's it's built to help you start. And it's it's very beginner friendly. Highly recommend checking out again. This was Twitch Studio that you can instantly download uh, here on Twitch. You'll click your icon top right inside the creator dashboard. There will be a button that you can click. Let's see if I can pull it up real quick. 
And so this is for everyone that just wants to get started. And after I show you this the last time, I'll uh, kind of give you a glimpse into my workflow and how I start streaming and all of the various things I've added that are basically extra. I'm very extra. <laughs> so you click here on the home and uh, there should be like a, a button that will streaming tools, I think. Yeah, you can download the, the Twitch Studio Beta. beta. Uh, but here are the other options that you can use. This is the one I use, Open Broadcaster Software. And this is another one we might visit today if we have time, which is basically Streamlabs Desktop. Uh, it's a customized version of this software that will allow you to uh, have instant access to all of the widgets. And widgets is kind of like an overarching term for like alerts and the chat that might be kind of scrolling on screen, as well as like emotes or like game optimized settings will, this is kind of like in terms of difficulty, I would say if you want to just get started, use Twitch studio. If you think yourself, you know, like a, a good uh, software, like you can pick something up and run with it. Use this one Streamlabs desktop. And then if you want like expert mode where you can customize it completely, like you can uh, do I think we lost you for a second half dork you might cut out oh check check trying. one two there you go welcome back thanks but as for like getting started i just want to preface for beginners do twitch studio for advanced users use one of these two this one has a lot more kind of like user-friendly experience so it's like medium level and then open broadcaster software like the sky's the limit there's like you could do pretty much anything uh, when it comes to kind of streaming using this software. And it's great to learn. But again, for beginners, try Twitch Studio Beta. So that being said, let's go ahead and wrap up here in Twitch Studio Beta. We've done a stream. We've done a recording. It saved it to my videos on my computer. I've edited the scene. We've explored, you know, what incorporates a scene. You can see the game capture in the back. You can customize your alerts by adding like an icon, change the color. You've been able to customize your chat. Like when I was recording, I noticed there was this purple border behind my chat. I didn't want that purple border. So now that I'm back in, I can turn it off and I can even do this while I'm live too, which is fantastic. So we can save it and then we come back and yeah, we can explore the other scenes. Like, and if we wanted to customize them, we could change the border on this one, for example, and all of the same settings are there. So yeah, uh, fantastic software, highly recommend it. But we can go ahead and close that and move on. What should we tackle next, gentlemen? So I heard that the, the steps to advancement from easy, medium, hard is Twitch Studio to Streamlabs to OBS. And so we were talking a little bit before this about kind of how OBS is open source, but Streamlabs did some potentially shady business practices. I think that's interesting. I don't know if you have any experience in Streamlabs, but that would be, I think, a good segue into kind of the next more difficult and more um, flexible tool. Yeah, very glad you asked, and I even had it ready. <laughs> so with Streamlabs desktop, again, you can download it from this kind of page inside of Twitch. You can go to their website, click the download button, uh, it's very streamlined. As soon as you click download, they'll be like, hey, make an account with us, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll have like a dashboard. So we'll keep logged in with my Twitch account. Hopefully it doesn't. Oh, okay. It's it's on Dorkbot right now. Oh, that's because I'm in a. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. I was in a different browser. Just for Dorkbot. So on your dashboard on Streamlabs OBS, there's a couple things. So this screen that you're looking at right now is my Streamlabs dashboard. And what that means is I've made an account with them. And now that I've logged in, I can check out all of the things that are tools that I can use. And so we're going to come back to this, but this is kind of like a, uh, a, a resource for widgets, such as your alert box, your event list, uh, you can even have things like a donation goal. Let's say you had like a follower goal or, and there's so many cool things that you can add to your stream that these are like 
extra kind of like icing on the cake in a way. And so we're going to come back to this. But first, we're going to look at the software itself. And so I'm going to delete all these and we're going to start from scratch. Because I was just poking around the software as a good idea to kind of like introduce you to. So the first time you open it up, this is kind of what your screen will look like. Uh, if you were to click around, there's this little arrow here that you can open up your stream chat. And this is pre-built in, like this is ready to go. Uh, the only things that you do have to add are through the settings. So when you're in the settings, we're going to go ahead and talk about this because this is, uh, it, it's a little bit more advanced because you're not using Twitch's built-in software. Instead, you have to kind of like plug it in as you go. So let's say I wanted to start streaming on Twitch. If I want to start streaming, I need a stream key. And so to get your stream key, you have to go to your Twitch. And so let's open up Twitch. I can't really show you on screen because then you guys can hack my Twitch. Yeah, I was definitely going to mention <laughs> fair warning. Don't share your stream key with anybody. It's, it's the same yeah. thing like sharing your MetaMask secret phrase. You know, if they get a hold of your stream key, then anybody could take your stream and broadcast. Yep. And that is definitely a security risk. Uh, luckily, they won't have access to like your funds or anything such as that. But if someone's streaming from your account, uh, you know, it's like someone stole your identity in a way. So it's blurred out. But if you wanted to find your stream key, you would go to your settings. And then in the stream section, it's at the very top. So I can copy it here. And I'll click this copy button. Now that I have it, I can paste it here. And now that's pretty much ready to go. All I had to do was select Twitch as my service. The server will automatically pick from wherever is located closest to you. And then that's pretty much done. I can uh, click through other settings. I'll go ahead and click done just so it's saved. And now if I were to click back in there, stream key is already put in. Perfect. So more settings. Again, this is kind of like the next step in your Twitch streaming journey is learning what each of these do. So when you're streaming, you have several audio tracks to pick from. I would recommend leave it at one. So audio tracks are kind of like the various interfaces that you can connect. Let's just say your microphone, you were streaming to audio tracks one and two. If you're when you're recording, microphone and audio track too, but when you're streaming, everything is all put into one specific track. So that's why you're able to pick from these. And I hope I kind of described that well enough that when you're streaming, it's putting everything from this particular track out onto your stream. So if your microphone is coming to one and two, you're, it's still going to one. And your gameplay, maybe it's only on audio track one, not on audio track two. But just to kind of like hammer that point home, if you're recording, you can have more than one audio track recording. And so let's just say I had the gameplay and the microphone recording to one, but microphone was the only thing on audio track two. If I were to go into this recording later on, there would be two different files for my audio. One, track number one, would have the microphone and the gameplay already mixed. Like the audio track two would only have the microphone. And so that is kind of something that you can use specific with OBS and Streamlabs OPS that can be very essential for post-production. And so that would be like video editing. So back to the streaming settings though. And uh, I'll give you guys a, <laughs> if you have any questions before I continue. Oh no, I was just trying to like wrap my head around this audio track one and two. Like, yeah, it's actually super helpful. Um, like you said, for post-production now that uh, I see it's an option. Um, mm -hmm. But for one example, let's say you're playing uh, a game and you're talking to people in game, but you don't want to record uh, for post-production. You don't want to record like discord, for example. Yeah. So you could have that on a separate track and then just upload the gameplay. Yes, exactly. So if you're streaming, it's only using one of those tracks. But uh, while you're streaming, you can also record. So you can do these two things simultaneously. So let's say I'm streaming and I'm recording at the same time and that I have three tracks that are being recorded. 
So in the file, as it's being written, Audio Track 1 has all three things, gameplay, my microphone, and Discord. But Audio Track 2 only has my, dis my uh, microphone. But then Audio Track 3 only has my Discord. So when I'm looking at this file inside of like a, uh, a video editing software, such as Premiere, Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, when I'm looking at it, I can essentially look at only track three if I, I wanted the Discord volume. And so then I can just kind of like uh, use that for like clips, for example. Maybe I was talking over a friend and he said something super funny. Like I can cut that specific part out and use it for other things. And so this is just another tool that you can use to your advantage as a content creator. So now that you understand how like recording works in a, in a way, very generally, we're going to look more at like the output mode. And so there's a simple output mode that you can use just to get started. And this is probably where I would suggest you start as a, a new streamer. And then we'll look more into the advanced. But uh, each of these settings, we'll just talk over briefly. And then if you have questions, would love to kind of answer them as they come up. So video bit rate, as we saw, was like how many bits are being shared through your upload speed. So 3000 is a great starting point, And it's something I use uh, specific to like Sandbox because it's not like Fortnite, for example, where you're like spinning the camera around and you don't need to be sharing all of this information, which that's all it is, is these bits is like how much information is happening at one point. So with Sandbox, like 4000 is probably enough to have like a crisp clear gameplay experience. Uh, I wouldn't go lower than 1000. If even if your internet uh, is like very bad, if it's that bad, 1000 is like the minimum. Uh, 2500 is a great place to start, uh, but shoot for like 2500, 3500 for like a good uh, average gameplay. Uh, if your internet's great, 6000 is where you should be looking at. Like if your internet can manage it, start with 6,000. So now that we're done with that, uh, you can see there's an encoding section. So if you have a great processor, you'll wanna use the software. But if you have a great graphics card, uh, this is arguably the better solution. So let's say you have like a 1080p, uh, you know, Titan graphics card, whatever the kids are using these days, you would use the NVEC encoder. And so that puts all of the streaming kind of like processing power on your graphics card. So the graphics card's doing all the work. Audio bit rate, I wouldn't worry too much about unless you're like an audiophile. 128 is the kind of default, the starting package. And it's kind of like the standard, especially with um, streaming, broadcasting, as well as video content in general. Uh, when you go into these higher settings, it's it's more so for like, certain auditorial experiences like ASMR, like maybe somebody would want like higher bit rate for that. Uh, so recording path, you can set all of these things up in advance. You can browse to a, a folder that you want specifically on your computer. You can record in whatever quality you would prefer. Maybe your computer can't handle uh, like a high quality. You can instead use like same as stream and maybe your stream's only doing 2000 bit, bit rate per second. You can change your audio recording format. And so MP4 is the standard when it comes to like video files. And most video editors will be able to edit these. Uh, however, like FLV is the smallest file size out of these listed, but it's also harder to uh, put into some of the freer alternatives for video editing. So I recommend MP4. Uh, the encoder is, is definitely uh, dependent on whatever hardware you have in your computer. So if you have a great graphics card, use the NVEC. If you don't, and perhaps your CPU is like the best part of your machine, you'll want to use one of the softwares here. And so that was the simple, let's just take a peek at the advanced settings. So this is where you would look if you wanted to, like Bobby had suggested, separate his Discord audio from his microphone audio for post-production. You would go to the advanced mode, and you can look into all of these settings here. We won't go into too much detail, but uh, you can customize a lot of the settings that we were just kind of like poking through and simple. So for example, the constant bit rate, that's CBR, or variable bit rate, 
And uh, several of these settings you don't necessarily need to use, but if you really wanted to kind of like find that sweet spot for your computer, you could customize these numbers. Uh, CPU speed, so, you know, what order the processor would be on your computer in terms of like, let's say you never want your stream to kind of lag for a viewer, but the gameplay, it's okay if that lags. You can change it to be uh, ultra fast, for example. And that, that means like your your stream will never be the problem. Instead, it, it is the problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just poke through these if you're curious, and I'd be happy to go into detail with these questions. Uh, but again, all you needed was your stream key. Now you have that, you'll check out, we'll start with simple output mode. Let's do 3000 bit rate. And audio, you'll want to look into these settings. Make sure you have your desktop audio device as your default, because that's where all your kind of alerts will come through, is your de default desktop audio device. But then also make sure you have a microphone set up. So you can see I actually have uh, set this. This was disabled at first, so you as a content creator will need to go in here and set your microphone. So you'll need to pick from whatever microphones you have available. I have a couple of extra things. I can answer questions about these, but they're digital audios. And so let's say I wanted to use my RTX voice microphone. So this is actually another <laughs> extra thing that I'll, I'll show you in the last part of this tutorial. But I picked my microphone out. And now that it's, it's there, it's selected, you can see a audio representation of my voice. And so what's nice is I've already kind of adjusted it in the window settings to where it's not peaking. So when I get too close to the microphone, it might turn red, for example. And so red is when it's starting to get into that danger spot. Lil Nori asks, What's the difference between streaming on OBS and Streamlabs OBS? The main difference is that you have access to your customized alerts a lot easier in Streamlabs OBS. That's a pro for Streamlabs OBS. A pro for OBS is that you're able to add third-party plugins. Uh, and I will show you several of them. I'll, let me just go ahead and open up OBS Studio, Studio to just give you a visual idea of what I look at on my streams, because I use OBS Studios, not Streamlabs. And speaking of, uh, you had showed me Nerd or Die, a website for Ooh. Twitch overlays uh, kind of packaged together. And do you use this in conjunction with OBS, or is this uh, Streamlabs, or which one? Yeah, so I use... OBS Studio and Nerd or Die, which I had introduced to Bobby, is a kind of like overlay package. So let's take a look at my stream here. Uh, so this is what I look at when I'm setting up. And we'll come back to this, but I, I wanted to give you an idea of what OBS Studio has in terms of like power. So I have customized it to where it has several kind of like additional features. So this chat, for example, like I can. I can move it around a lot easier. Like I have a, an activity feed, which will show me where, you know, people are like who followed last or who subscribed or like who donated. I can kind of browse through it. There's an audio mixer that's highly customizable. So I can like go into these and adjust the tracks. And you can do this in Streamlabs OBS too, but I'm just kind of demonstrating what's on screen right now. Like, let's say I wanted to switch scenes. I can click on one of these. And I've ha I have extra uh, plugins that allow me to do more things. So, for example, I have this thing called a downstream keyer. And these are advanced things uh, I'm just kind of showing off at this point. But I could have, let's say, some sort of information on screen. So I made this, and I still haven't used it on my stream. But this is an additive source so now if i were in a, a regular scene that will always be on top of my my gameplay and so that's that's an example of some of the additional things that obs studio has over streamlabs streamlabs to preface is very user friendly and i like to compare it to mac versus windows so mac would be streamlabs obs where it's very uh 
appealing to the eye, like you're able to navigate it in a way that makes sense, especially for a beginner. However, OBS Studio is more like Windows, where it's like the sky is the limit. Like there's really no limitation that OBS Studio can do, but there's a lot more of a skill kind of ceiling. And Lil Nori asks, can you stream on multiple platforms using OBS for free? Because it, yes, I think uh, Streamlabs you have to pay for uh, streaming on multiple platforms. Yeah, that is a, a fantastic uh, question. So this is the software that you'll want to look into if you want to use OBS Studio to stream. So it's called Restream. And so you're able to multi-stream by broadcasting your Twitch key or your stream key through this platform, Restream. So Restream, just to kind of like sum it up, uh, takes whatever keys from each website that you're streaming to. So let's say Twitch and YouTube for this example. You're sending both of these stream keys to Restream, and then Restream spits out this new code that you put into OBS. And with this new code, basically all of your content is streamed directly to Restream. So this uh, software right here, it's, it's not even a software, it's a website. So they're receiving your stream and then they're broadcasting it to Twitch and YouTube. So it's, this is the free solution, but uh, you can only, using the free version, only stream to like two places. So like Twitch and YouTube. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you become a Twitch affiliate, it is against the terms of service to stream to multiple platforms. So that is why Sandbox and Panda Pops, the good morning, afternoon, evening show, that is why they are not affiliate status, is so they aren't breaking any rules. They're essentially streaming uh, using a service like Restream. I believe they actually use this service, and they're probably paying for the additional features so that they can broadcast it across the internet and not just on Twitch. And so, Lil Nori, I hope that answers your question. Uh, so, unfortunately, because you're an affiliate, it is technically against their terms of service to be streaming elsewhere because you signed a contract with them. Whoa. See, I was wondering the same thing because um, I noticed that Sandbox didn't go the affiliate route. They are right. not connected to Twitch at all. They don't, they don't even, I think. And so um, I noticed they use Restream and, and all that. So that's what keeps, that's what gives them that freedom. Yes, and so, so they are kind of, yeah. Go ahead. We, we might have made a mistake, Chad. Squiggly might have made a mistake by becoming an affiliate and opting to do so because, well, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but this is a very interesting trade-off to all the new streamers is in no time, you're gonna basically have the five or 10 hours of streaming required to reach that next mark. And they're, what affiliate means is pretty much you put in your bank account information and they say, hey, there's a way for you to make money by people subscribing to you or like giving you free free stuff. And you say, great, I'm gonna do it. And we did that, we're all on board for it. But actually after I just learned that now we can't use Restream, which potentially in the, in the long term, it may or may not, um, maybe we should have two channels, you know, like an official Twitch, affiliate channel and then maybe we can have a, a burner twitch account or a secondary twitch account that is used for the the restream announcements but but bobby i don't know like how would you think about this twitch affiliate and restream thing given this information and what would be maybe your advice to to a new streamer coming in because this seems like an important decision we have to make um, I don't see it as quite like as much of a problem. If you like Twitch, if you like the platform, um, you can continue to use it and and like focus on that platform. But if you want to uh, branch out, I mean, like I said, uh, you could use YouTube for for where your broadcasts go to retire. Uh, Twitch could be for the live broadcasts, and then YouTube could be your uh, your kind of plan B for whenever you're done broadcasting. You've done a little bit of post production, you've cleaned it up, and you've got somewhere to put it. Yeah. And just to piggyback off that, YouTube is essential for growth, but it doesn't need to be where your live streams are. 
So live streams can be like specific to Twitch in the fact that it's where someone can interact with you in real time. YouTube can be that portfolio. It can be a place where people find you and then can come and talk to you. So it's like it, you can use them synergized rather than only live stream. And you can also uh, post your live streams uh, according to the affiliate uh, kind of like terminology. So that's the Mike's kind of cutting out a little bit, I think. Is that is it just for me? I'm sorry. Is it cutting uh, out for you too, Ed? Oh. I It might be me because I'm getting like an error a okay. little bit. Are you, are you streaming with like 6,000 kilobits right now? <laughs> I wonder if that's... You're good. I think you're back. Okay. So yeah, just to preface uh, and summarize... Using Twitch can be specific to live streaming. YouTube, as Bobby said, is fantastic for displaying your work as well as kind of promoting your Twitch stream. And so using those in tandem is part of the success formula to being a content creator. Keep in mind, like, keep in mind being Twitch affiliate is not a, not a mistake at all. I mean, it's, it definitely opens up the door for... Um, for making a little money on the side if you were to uh if you wanted to stream uh, a lot more often yeah and uh youtube itself is what a lot of creators will say is how they started growing so think of it in a way as like twitch is how you're making the content like maybe you're making you know this gameplay and then you'll want to kind of like touch it up and put it into post-production in terms of like cutting it and you know putting a, a sensible story to your live stream. And then you're going to upload that to YouTube. And that's how people will find you because YouTube is much more uh, easier to find like an, a creator as well as absorb their content. You know, like if you find someone, you're able to go through their uh, entire collection, their catalog. And then it's like, oh, they, they, they live stream and I can talk to them in person and thank them for, you know, whatever they did. That's that's why YouTube can be used for Twitch growth. And it's it's part of why a lot of uh, Twitch streamers are successful is because they have content across social media, not just on Twitch. Yeah, and that's an important so, point that I learned from, I guess, a YouTube video <laughs> of a streamer is he's like, don't count on your growth as a Twitch streamer coming from Twitch, meaning you gotta put content on YouTube, you gotta be on Twitter. If you're streaming The Sandbox, you kind of know where everyone hangs out. It's like Twitter mainly, um, and The Sandbox Discord, maybe a couple of other Discords, but I think it's important to emphasize that if you just stream every single day without telling anybody, the organic growth that you're gonna see is nothing like the organic growth you would get on TikTok, uh, that you would get from following and engaging with creators on Twitter. So. So I don't know if Half Dark, you've seen this in your experience, but definitely I, I subscribe to that mindset that streaming alone is not going to grow your, your streamer base. Yeah, and Squigglyverse has such a, a great portfolio kind of kickstart program. And having that way of putting your content in an easily able to digest kind of fashion is important. It's almost imperative as a content creator. Because live streams, it's a a, a unique kind of interaction medium it's not something where people can like search you and then be like oh they made this this and this twitch streaming is more like you're joining them in a random point in time you know as they're doing something specific and so that's where portfolios come in play and i think squigglyverse uh has this great kind of kickstarting program like you guys do wordpress you kind of introduce people to hosting your own things and so that's why I'm a, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so uh, Chelios, you had asked about switching the resolution. And so was that with Twitch Studio specifically? Or we can go into Streamlabs here. And so if you wanted to switch your output and uh, let's say your video resolution. If you were to click inside these settings here, inside the video resolution, 1920 by 1080p is the industry standard. That is your HD screens. 
But let's say your computer isn't able to manage that. Uh, you could take it down a notch. And so using that same ratio, which is 16 by 9, uh, so it's like, think of it in terms of inches. So that's like 16 inches by 9 inches. So that's like the, the rectangle you're looking at. So this is that same ratio, but uh, a little bit smaller. And so that also impacts how many bits are being displayed on your screen. So that goes back to the kilobits per second. So if you're doing 6,000 as your bit rate and you're using less kind of like screen space, it's going to improve the overall quality, but at the same time making it fractionally smaller. And uh, Chelios asks about the one where you can change it to 6K live. Yeah, let's um, open up Twitch Studio again because I think that was specific to that. And so you're asking about switching back the resolution. So all of these settings are going to be displayed for you at the top of your dashboard. But if you wanted to change them, you can go into your settings and then into your stream quality. And this is where you can adjust these various things. And it's all in real time, too. So as soon as you adjust it, let's say we wanted to do not 6K, but 3K. So like cut the quality in half. It'll be easier on our computer. And we can change the resolution. Maybe I wanted to test out that full frame experience, that full HD 1920 by 1080p. We could do that. Also, uh, Twitch Studio does have an optimize, which is fantastic. But yeah, that's how you would customize in that particular uh, software. If you were in Streamlabs OBS, which we have open right now, we can customize our resolution. So again, that's the, uh, the frame size. And so if it's the same ratio, 16 by 9, it's the same frame, but just bigger. So it's the same kind of ratio, but larger. So just to kind of summarize what that in, it means is <laughs> it's sending those bits, more bits, because it's bigger. I'm trying to like dumb it down in a way that's easier to kind of like comprehend. And so if you have questions, happy to answer them. Uh, so we have all of these set up. We want to change the bit rate. That would be in our output settings and here in the streaming. So we're going to do 3K. I think 3K is a great place to start. And then you can kind of record and stream and look back on your progress and see, oh, maybe that wasn't, you know, good for my computer. But everything there is set up. While we were talking, I kind of set up a couple things. So now that we're in Streamlabs OBS, we have our scenes. So on the left side will be all of our scenes. So let's say we'll, we'll make two more. We'll do uh, just chatting. And then we'll also make a, a third scene for Be Right Back. So in the Be Right Back scene, let's add like a cool picture. So you could click inside the next panel. It's called our sources. So inside the sources, you could click the plus. And then I want a cool picture. So we'll do a media source, add source, cool pick, bro. And then we'll browse and find in my wallpapers here. Oh, I apologize. This is uh, media sources for videos. <laughs> so we'll rename this the cool vid, bro. We wanted an image source, which is down here in the general. And so let's add a new source. That's a small tab here at the bottom. And so I found this cool wallpaper here. And so this is my Be Right Back screen. So let's add uh, a text. And we can say Be Right Back on it. And so this text here is super small because we haven't typed anything yet. Well, maybe I have a particular font I like. Let's do Montserrat. And then we can adjust the font size. So I want this to take up a large percentage of the stream. So we'll do the maximum 288 here. And then we can also color it. 
we can make it red. And just by grabbing it, you can see it has this bounding box. So I can place it right in the center of the screen. And boom, that's a great example of a be right back screen. Because you probably wouldn't want your camera on it if you're stepping away for a time. But in, in the scene, let me walk through introducing your camera to a scene. So you would click the plus, and then you would do video capture device. So by clicking that, you add the source, and then my particular video, <laughs> it's hanging upside down. So in order to fix that, I have to right click, transform, and then flip vertically. So that's my camera. And my camera is recording in 1920 by 1080p. And so now I can change the size of it just by clicking the top left or top right or bottom left or bottom right. And it's going to scale it proportionally. You can also crop it. So if you hold down Alt on your keyboard, you can remove however much of the camera itself that you don't want. So let's say I just wanted this small square. And uh, Chelios is asking about the difference between scene and profile. Yes. So let's uh, talk about that. The profile is going to be kind of like your collection of scenes. So I have a couple here. Let's um, go into one of my dork scenes or profiles. I'm sorry, a dork profile. This is what I was streaming from when I first started. And then I moved into OBS. Videos. And so this is a game I used to play uh, called Final Fantasy XI. And so I had a, um, a whole selection of kind of scenes that I could pick from. And so they all had like unique uh, transitions and stuff. And I had like interesting overlays. But all of these scenes are tied to the profile. So the profile in terms of Game Maker is like the parent. And so the scenes are each children of that parent that have children of their own. So let's go back to our squiggly test. Yeah, this got me thinking, man. I mean, if you're even streaming a game, it could be the game maker. It could be another video game. Like during a loading screen, you can switch scenes so that all of the chat is visible. Um, just makes it a lot more interactive to think that you can now change up every loading screen to have different elements. That's really smart. I hadn't thought of that. For sure. And by having these profiles, you're able to customize for a game specifically. And yeah, like Ed was saying, like having the chat maybe on a certain part of the uh, the screen itself, or perhaps only in your Vox edit and not in Game Maker. So by using these profiles, you're able to customize that a lot more and then saving it. So it's like you can have like a version one, for example. And you don't want to edit any more of version one. You want to make a new version. And you'll have that version one just as your backup. And so by using profiles, you're able to customize and basically save settings as you make them. And so that being your parent, you can go into these scenes, which uh, each of your scenes is basically a good way to separate games. So let's say, for example, this initial scene, we can rename it by right-clicking. This will be my game maker scene. I can also duplicate it and make Vox edit scene. So now that I have those, I can reorder them by dragging and dropping them. And let's go ahead and st start up both the game maker. It's probably going to lag me. <laughs> and we'll start up Vox edit. And while those are booting up, we can customize our just chatting scene. So let's add a different picture. So a picture, a wallpaper, any of those things you can find online, Google, Pinterest, etc. So you'll find it on your computer. We can name it whatever we like, but we'll add the source. You'll browse to it. And then you'll go through the same kind of sequence of adding your sources. Excuse me. You can also copy your sources. So right now I've selected my video capture device, control C, and now I can paste it, control V, into the same scene. And you can reorder everything on your screen as you see fit. So with the just chatting scene, I'll probably make my camera a lot bigger. 
So we'll remove that crop and we can go center frame. Maybe <laughs> for this particular scene, I'm going into the, the cave of darkness. And so maybe I'll want chat on the right side of my screen. So let's, let's see how we can add chat. So again, you'll go to your sources plus, and then down here at the bottom, you'll see all of the widgets that Streamlabs OBS can help you set up. So with Streamlabs, you've made an account, you've connected your Twitch account. Now you can go into these settings and click any of these widgets and add them as a source. So just by clicking yes, yes, add, add, we can now have this widget on screen and in our sources. They even give you a kind of like a sample of like how it operates. It's not going to show up here, but they do give you an idea for like when people are actually talking in your chat. And you can customize all the various properties. Maybe you wanted to change the font or the background. You wanted to, if you're familiar with HTML, you can even customize it here. So that's an example. We can also add an alert box. This is something that you'll want to add to your stream because it notifies you when someone follows. So just by clicking add, so plus, and then selecting alert box, I now have this on my screen. And I can test it by having uh, this mini feed here. Let's say you've, you had a couple follows in the last couple of days. You're able to click like the repeat, which is this here on the right side. And you can test it. Or you can also just test it from these settings by double clicking the source. And so let's say I wanted to test a follow. We can click this play button. And I can see it in the box displayed. And everything that you can edit is here on the screen for you. So let's say I wanted to uh, change the media. I, I customized a lot of these in the past. But yeah, we can use some of the stock files. So I want the dancing avocado. I select yes. Uh, I can change the media. And those are League of Legends sound effects. And so now that those are set up, we can test a new alert. And it didn't save, <laughs> but it did save here. I think I have variations. And so it's um, it's different sound effects. So that's not a great example, but... If you only have one, it's going to show up. If I keep clicking this, it'll eventually <laughs> cycle to it. But uh, that's just an example of one of the many widgets you can add to your stream. So chat box, like you can add a goal. Yeah, there's so many great options here. And Maxi Max is wondering, is adding widgets, any? does it add any toll on the broadcast? The widgets don't. Uh, surprisingly... Widgets are a browser source. So it's essentially sending a request to the Streamlabs website. And the Streamlabs is then kind of displaying HTML or website kind of information through that link. And so that link is then kind of being uh, added to your stream. So a lot of that back end is not displayed in Streamlabs OBS because you don't need to touch it. It's all used and kind of edited through this type of interface, which is fantastic for new streamers such as yourselves. And so by clicking all of this and adjusting all of this, you know, they, they even give you a way to customize the code, <laughs> but it's hidden behind several like fold out buttons. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? And so what it's doing is it's kind of helping you uh, by being the middleman. So you can also add a, a browser source. And this is the same kind of idea, but not as intuitive or user-friendly. So you'll add web-based content. So it's all using the internet and that connection and displaying it on your screen. Uh, for the most part, that doesn't really take up any bandwidth. I, I don't think that'll be any hindrance on your machine at all. And so as long as you have an internet connection, that's all you really need. So browser sources. Let's, uh, let's just take a peek at them. This is a little bit of an introduction to a browser source. So let me walk you through what one might use this for. Add a browser source. 
So again, I, I hit the plus arrow and Streamlabs OBS is what we're looking at right now. And you can even, you can still see my microphones going right now. And uh, my camera is actually picking up audio too. This is my camera. So in the browser source, we'll double click it and you can see a URL here. So it's like, oh, a URL, where would I find that? So let's go now to the Streamlabs website. A lot of windows open. <laughs> I had it. Oh, here we go. So on the Streamlabs website, let's add a donation goal. Sure, why not? And here is the browser source URL. So it's a widget. So widget, it's like the keyword for a lot of these things. So we'll copy it. Please don't share this. I guess I shouldn't <laughs> share it. Uh, and now that we have that copied, we can go back to our browser source. We can paste in that code, which you now see <laughs> on screen. <laughs> and uh, now we'll want to customize it. Oh, so we'll do... Screenshotted, clipped, yeah. stolen. Got you. No, you're going to be able to put that on your screen now. I get to steal your widget. If anybody donates to that goal, it'll show up on my stream instead. <laughs> and so right now, I'll, I'll put this back on screen. I'm customizing the goal. So I put in the browser source. You noticed it kind of disappeared with that kind of default background. So let's say it's going to end at the end of the month. We'll do 03, 30. 2022 start goal so now that our goal is saved look we have it here as a interactive widget that we can customize we can shrink it so i can use these arrows and maybe put it like right under my camera here and so let's say we're saving money for charity you know help those in ukraine and so by saving and sharing this kind of interactive goal as soon as someone donates some money it's going to update and so just to demonstrate that we can add to the goal again and look the green arrow went up so that's that's one example of a browser source if you were to look through all the other widgets that streamlabs op offers you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how customized you can make your stream and i highly recommend those of you interested in streaming, start poking down <laughs> this road and just kind of like checking out all of the cool features that you can add to your stream. Because it, it, I found it very fun and I fell down that rabbit hole of just customizing my stream. And so I can show you now OBS. And this is probably the last of our tutorial series. Yes, and OBS, Open Broadcast Studio, is what we are using for this stream today. And... If I were to do it again, chat, would I start from the hardest and most confusing to use tool? Probably not. I would probably go from Twitch Studio to Streamlabs OBS up to OBS just because it can get a little overwhelming, but I'm excited. I think what we've learned so far has been super helpful. I really like the Streamlabs widgets that, that are free. And I guess a question, Half Dork, before we go into the the beast, the OBS, um, how would you recommend practicing on streams, right? Because like every time you go live, you want to practice going live. So would you say, you know, don't tell any of your friends that you have a Twitch account until you've gone live a couple of times and, and practiced using some of those widgets and like have seen your own streams after recording them? Yes, uh, mainly because, and yeah, just to rephrase what you said, by doing these practice streams, not telling anyone, you're able to test your software. You're able to test your hardware. You're testing your internet connection. And you want to make sure, you know, everything's presentable before you click that live button, you know, for the, the real first time when you're ready. So there is going to be a lot of setup and it can be daunting. And that's why we're here to help. And so you're free to ask me, tag me on the Squigglyverse Discord if you have questions about streaming. And maybe I can point you in the right direction. I promise you, uh, YouTube has tons of tutorials that will really set you on you know, the right foot when you go down this path. So you can actually do Twitch streams uh, from a test kind of key. 
So you don't actually have to stream to your account if that's something you want to avoid. I don't think many people will mind, you know, if you're testing things on your Twitch account. In fact, it's a great way for people to stumble into your stream and then you can maybe like make a first impression. Uh, and obviously every little bit helps uh, in terms of finding you. So just by doing these practice streams, you're you're putting yourself out there and there's nothing wrong with that. you know, new tools at your disposal and you start finally testing your software. We can look now at OBS studios. So you'll immediately notice I have a lot more uh, open windows and that's from their called docs. And so docs are like plugins. So for example, I can have this plugin here that tells me how my stream quality is doing. Like, am I lagging right now? Like what might be causing the lag? Uh, do I have enough space available for my recordings? And so maybe I wanted to reset this. And so now that I've reset it, like it's it's like, okay, I fixed things. Let's see if it's still lagging. And so that's an example of some. Oop, I think we lost you for a moment. I'm the third party. Yeah, I have so many things open right now. I think it's... Uh... <laughs> no, it's definitely understandable. No, it's not your fault. It... Um... Thank you back. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for uh, clipping my secrets code. Appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I wanted to give you an example of my stream and how I operate. And I'll kind of walk you through the various things that I use at my disposal. So... Unfortunately, I have to reconnect uh, to Twitch. It looks like everything's good here. Perfect. So when I first start, the first things I do is I test my microphone. So I make sure this is working. And then on my starting screen, I will mute my microphone. So I have a button that I click, a hotkey, uh, which you can also add in other software. Even in Twitch Studio, you can add a hotkey. So like I'm not clicking mute. I, I actually have a button on my keyboard that I'm pressing to mute. And so now that that's muted, I can go now to my sources and I can look and see, oh, I can, I can have scrolling text on my screen. Let's say I have a question of the day. So the question of the day, before I actually go live, I would change. So we can say, what game from the Fungi Retro Game Jam is a must play? Or like, what's your favorite color? And I'm happy to go into detail with these, but I'm just walking you through my process of how I start streaming. I also have a timer. So this timer is another setting that you can kind of like customize and add through a series of plugins. So this, this one is actually reading a file on my computer. And I have several timers that when read, basically starts at whatever time I set it to. So this one is at two minutes. So when I click start, it's going to count down using this text file. So it's, it's basically updating this text file in essentially real time. And it's counting down. You can see it on the screen. Uh, a couple of other things. I have a music kind of reading plugin. So it reads whenever I have uh, a song playing. Let's see if it will register. I started up Spotify. And uh, I highly recommend uh, a couple of playlists that you find through Spotify, through YouTube, that are copyright friendly, especially if you're uploading your videos, your stream elsewhere. So by having copyright friendly music, you could have an overlay like this that displays it. And these are advanced things that I, I'd be happy to kind of walk you through or introduce you to. And now that you have this all set up, I have my music going, I have the question of the day set up, I have my timer going, I'll wait for that minute to show up, maybe I'll say hi uh, in chat, so I'll say, hey friends. And so, let's, let's say the two minutes is up, I'll, I'll go to my camera scene, so the just me, the chatting stream, I'll say, hi everybody, it's me, Half Dork. And then we'll just kind of like walk through of everything we're doing today. I can't wait to get started. 
Then we'll hop into the sandbox. And one thing you might have noticed is I have <laughs> extra moving plugins on the transition. So it's like zooming my camera out and then pulling up, you know, whatever I'm working on. And so now that this is up, let's say someone follows me. You can see my notifications are customized where I have it in the top right screen. There's like a, a list. And then right above me has the, uh, the display, the name that pops up on screen. And so now that you're looking at this, you'll be like, wow, how'd you make those cool custom animations? And so everything I used has been kind of made and sold as a overlay package. And so Nerd or Die is the website I used and suggested it to Bobby. And it's something we can help Squiggly set up today if they're interested. Oh, absolutely. I don't know uh, if we'll do it live, but I'm definitely looking through the collections and shopping around for maybe a Nerd or Die asset uh, collection. That way we can get those those nice follower uh, alerts and those new subscriber alerts. Yeah, that's something really interesting is like basically you don't have to recreate the wheel. There's a lot of templates, packs and, and things like that. So Half Dork, where could we find? some cool plugins, skins, textures, all of that stuff for streaming. So Nerd or Die is my first suggestion because they have free templates that you can get started. You can essentially download these, plug them in, and I actually downloaded one, downloaded one this morning, so I will show you. Uh, but you would go to their shop, you can browse uh, all of their paid packages, and let's say you found one you liked, you'd click on it, you can even watch their kind of videos for it and like how it would work on your stream. But so I picked one out. Let's uh let's see if I can find it real quick. And now that I've downloaded the pack, it is right here. I have all of these folders. We have icons, overlays, panels, and screens. So your screens could be like your be right back. You could have all of these were a free package, mind you, and they each serve a specific purpose. So this could be your transition. So this will be your offline screen, starting soon screen, your chatting screen. So you'd put your camera inside of this window. You'd be right back, etc. You have panels. So if you're unfamiliar with what these do, if you go to the bottom of your Twitch stream, I'll go to mine as an example. This is another thing you can customize about your stream. It's like interactive links that people can click. And when they do, it will take you to whatever link is attached to it. And so these are panels. So I'll just set one up real quick just to give you an example. If you edit your panels, you can click the big plus button here. And let's add, let's say, what's one of these? An Instagram. Uh, because you're actually using a picture, you don't want to name it. You can notice on my others that I haven't named any of the panels. So instead, we're going to take this to Instagram.com slash. Panel images we just downloaded. And the image itself is going to link us to Instagram. I don't actually have an Instagram, so we'll just make sure the, the URL works. And so I have submitted it. It looks like it's locked in. We can turn off edit and there it is. We can click it and it's going to take me to Instagram.com on twitch.tv. <laughs> and that's because I didn't add the, the HTT plus Instagram. So we click that, we're now on Instagram. And so now that you see how panels work, hopefully you'll add those to your stream as a way to introduce a viewer to other content, maybe your Twitter page or your YouTube. Other things that you could find in one of these overlay packages would be like a webcam border. You can also have uh, your event list. So if you noticed, I had it in the top right of my sandbox kind of stream. So up here on the top right is my event list. 
But on some of these packages, you could have something like this, where it's displaying like your most recent follower or your recent subscriber. And these are kind of advanced things that you can add over time. The best advice I can give for those of you that want to start streaming is to just start, just to open it up for the first time and begin to explore the software itself, as well as explore your voice and how you're going to, you know, put on a show, so to speak. And of course, you don't have to be super and entertaining and engaging the first couple times. In fact, I highly recommend just testing things out. And so everything there is an idea of an overlay package. So to wrap things up, you know, when your stream's over, you would generally kind of like have an outro. You'd say goodbye. I recommend rating. Rating is a fantastic way to introduce yourself to other people in the community. It's a great way to uh, just kind of say, hey, we're all here and we're supporting you. And it's it's just a great way to say hi, too. And you can also host. Hosting is another fantastic uh, way to interact with other streamers. So I think you can just type slash host and I can on my channel, for example, host the squiggly verse. So that means whenever someone comes to my channel, half dork, they'll see me uh, basically live broadcasting your channel. So it's like, even though they're on my channel, it's kind of like they're having a, a stream inside of a stream. So it's like they can see all of my panels and all of my content, but they're also watching you while they're here because you're live. And so that's an idea of what hosting is. Rating, as many of you are familiar, is a way to kind of like send everyone at the end of your stream. And so that's how I wrap up my streams is I'll go to the, the stream end scene and then I'll type in slash raid wiggly verse. And up at the top of the screen, It'll start this raid here. And then bada bing bada boom. Someone someone's here with me. <laughs> so we're gonna go raid the squiggly verse. And then squiggly verse would get a notification or it would might pop up in their alerts. We got some raiders, that's for sure. What's that's up, Half Dork? <laughs> What's up? Thank you for the raid with a party of two. Thanks for having you. Ooh. Hey, we're here to party. Yeah, yeah. So um <laughs> This was, this was really cool. I think for me, again, I did the mistake chat of, of going, we went straight to OBS and I think that was, it made us feel like streaming was harder than it actually was. I would recommend streaming on a PC. Streaming on a Mac is brutal because Macs don't support audio splitting, whereas PCs do. That means it's very hard for the stream to basically take what Half Dork is saying on a Discord call um, into the, the audio output. So, you know, I'd recommend start with Twitch Studio. It's the it's the easiest thing. Um, and, and our policy is 10% better every stream, right? What is one small improvement I can have? Like you don't need to have the fancy visuals. You don't need to worry if it's perfect. It's not going to be. But, you know, maybe next stream you change how your border looks to a color you like. Stream after that, you figure out how to work transitions. Um, so we obviously have a lot of work to do, but, you know, we've gotten much more comfortable hosting people um, and, 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 you know, adding some customizations. But, but I'm excited about this because I think what, what we're going to see is a lot more streamers half dork. And that's, that's all we could ask for because, you know, you really are your own brand as a streamer. Um, and it's going to be, you can literally do the same work you normally would do, build stuff in the game maker or build stuff in Vox edit. But now that you're streaming, you know, you can pretty much document your journey. Uh, you could share what you know with other people. You can build that fan base and um, you can market. The other cool thing you can do is you can get clips of your Twitch and upload those clips to YouTube. You can also upload those clips to TikTok. So you, re, you, you kind of have to, when you think about selling stuff, you got to think about marketing because right now the marketplace isn't open, but when the marketplace is open, it's all going to be marketing because everyone's going to be building, building something. So um, to build kind of that marketing engine, I would encourage you, you know, maybe once a week, have a stream. If nobody listens to it, fine. 
but then take little bits of it, maybe upload them to YouTube, make some TikToks out of it, and just consistently get content on a lot of platforms. And sooner or later, um, you're gonna get people showing up, the algorithm is gonna find you, um, and you're gonna hit some some pretty good growth levels. So so that's exciting. I'm really happy that, that we're focusing on kind of selling your your vision, what you're building, and, and building your brand. So I think streaming is a great way to, to get into that, for sure. But yeah, fantastic advice. I think streaming in general can seem daunting. And it is like a new software to learn. But hey, you learned how to use Vox Edit. You learned how to use uh, Game Maker. You're, you are capable of learning new things, and I hope you pick up streaming and you run with it. So... The last thing I know a lot of people are want to, you know, start recording their videos. And if you do use Twitch, make sure you go into your stream settings and you enable the VOD. That way it's storing your videos on Twitch. Right now, this is, you know, disabled by default. And so that's to prevent bots and stuff. So just make sure you turn it on. If you start streaming, that way you can come back to it and you can take parts and pieces of it. If you forgot to record, for example. But... <laughs> We did that yeah. half dork. VOD is video on demand. And we literally, our first one, we're like, big kickoff for squiggly first course. And everyone's like, woo. And then we're just like, oh, well, sorry. We actually didn't record it. So make sure to go into your <laughs> Twitch settings. Seriously, um, you'll save yourself some time. But but yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, this was Twitch Studio. This is the perfect starting place to get into streaming and i know a lot of you want to start and so this is what i recommend it it works right out of the box it is optimized and it is twitch friendly you just go to your profile page top right corner click creator dashboard and it's right there as soon as you download the software you are up and running and you can customize all the various features you can have alerts that work right out of the box and you can customize your, your camera, or you can even disable your camera. If you don't want it, you can click you know the icons over here, and you can turn them off and on. And then you select everything over here on your layers. You can move them around, customized. It's, it's just perfect. It's good to go. Uh, if you, and Crypto G's, just to answer your, your video, recording it. You can record your video. And this is perfect for those of you that uh, are unsure if your computer can even handle it. You can record first and then stream, you know, after that first recording. And so by clicking record, I think we got about half of that answer because your mic was cutting in and out, <laughs> unfortunately. I feel bad for Half Dork's computer. It's running Game Maker, Vox Edit, oh, yeah. Light Tracer, <laughs> Check Blender. All your <laughs> It's doing all of it. It's so I'm gonna go definitely ahead. rising. <laughs> so that being said, you can stream and record at the same time using Twitch Studio. I hope you check it out and give us your feedback at Squigglyverse. And if you have questions about streaming, please tag me. I'm happy to answer them. I'm also on Twitter. Twitter uh, at HalfDork. Uh, the O is an, a zero. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So everyone in the chat, like, please, please, please follow Half Dork if you see him on Twitter. Uh, he has a YouTube channel with only 10 subscribers. I'd like to see those numbers go up a little bit. But, you know, we're going to we're going to definitely follow up. There's a lot of questions that I'm sure everybody has. But the last thing I will say is there is an unmet problem that we SanFam can solve, which is there is no single community destination that is a shared schedule of who's streaming when because I don't want to I don't want to have my stream interrupt the official sandbox. I don't want to interrupt Game Dizzy. I don't want to have to compete with the same crowd. And it would be really cool if we could have, you know, just back to back to back to back streams that way you would get kind of raid trains and any new streamer would just be able to hop on that community schedule and then they would get you know the big raids coming into their their territory so that hasn't been solved yet i would say the the sandstorm meetup has the most yeah, like check your DM. half dork may be one step ahead of us oh. well 
I should say Sparky, uh, Sparky Snickle actually made this document a Google Sheets streamer schedule. So I think we as a community can use this. Uh, and Sparky, thank you again for making it. And right. um, I believe we should definitely have a channel on the Discord for streamers for announcing, like, anybody in the Squeakly fam, if you're going live, you could paste it there. Um, and I think it'll also, it probably will be, like, the Squeakly Follow Squeakly channel. Hmm. Um, we're also going to add a streamer or a streaming help page under the uh, under the Academy. And half Dork said you can, you can tag him if you have any questions. So go ahead and blow up. His notifications <laughs> in that channel please yeah Man. please do so how do we find out about this how do we how do we get access to it how do we add to it what's what because this is my first time seeing this beautiful schedule sparky shout out this is a huge need in the community um what's what's like the um what's the way that everyone can know about this because we are more than happy to share this uh, put this on our website too just like a boom here's the stream schedule and we don't even have to like code this we would literally just display it and embed it um the other thing is you know i don't know if anyone out there likes building stuff but it would be nice to have like a little dashboard you know like a cool user interface i don't know if there's like an out-of-the-box tool that supports this but you know google sheets is great that's a first step but you know, if we can build a search engine for the game maker, we can build a community kind of a, a community forum. So this is exciting. I like I like the uh, the quick growth of the sandbox community. I mean, we're an alpha, and and we're already organizing without the sandbox making us do this. Right? This is all self organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the community is really coming together, and so shout out to you, community. <laughs> cool. so we'll but uh it, yeah just to answer your question if you wanted to add yourself to the schedule uh there's instructions here add or click a1 so a1 in a sheet document is going to be this far left top left box here you'll click this and you'll scroll down and you could comment say oh i want to be in blah 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 time slot genius thank you Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to put that in our Discord, maybe post it in some link. We're going to put that on our website. We're going to make sure everybody knows about this schedule. We're going to try to blow it up. Half Dork, I really appreciate you coming on and, and, and the transparency <laughs> that, that you've kind of had with with how, how you do the magic. So it's really cool. I think opportunities like being able to see underneath the stream is is rare. So we're just we're just lucky to to have have this opportunity. So I mean, the last thing I'll say is I'm super grateful, obviously, to you for sharing your skills and to the chat for everyone who's been with us continuously learning um, on on their own free time. Yes, and thank you, Squigglyverse, for having me, Ed and Bobby. Thank you so much. It, it's been an honor, and I look forward to helping more with growing such you know a great community and share, sharing my knowledge and what I can provide. So thank you. Awesome. And then last thing I will say in closing, we will be live on Saturday having some extra, extra special guests who we have not had on the show yet, but they are exciting members of the community. And I guarantee you, chat, everyone here knows them. So surprise guests on Saturday mm -hmm. coming soon. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are Squiggly and we are out. Make sure to follow Half Dork on all social media platforms and hit us up on Discord with any questions.